Today's agenda is about Samsung and Android with Chrome. It's Chrome for mobile. And we will talk a little bit about the integration with the desktop. So let's talk about the features that can make a difference. All web browsers really have a lot of capabilities that are, are valuable to use and give you the same functionality. A web browser job is to display web pages on your device. And they all do that. So syncing with your Google account is really easy because when you set up your Android device, it usually asks you to log into your Google account and Chrome will recognize that sign in for the most part. You can sync with Chrome on your desktop and the things that sync are web pages, tabs, and uh, passwords and a few other things. So that synchronization is nice particularly if you've got different technologies, Chrome will work on virtually any type of platform. There's access to what's called Smart Search on Android, and it is available on desktop as well. There's an auto translate function. I'm gonna try and bring up a Spanish language website and we'll see if it how it displays auto translate. There's something called Simplified View. For those of you familiar with iPhones and iPads and Safari. Uh, Safari has something called Reader View and Chrome on Android now has something called Simplified View that you can set up in settings. They don't make it available by default because obviously Google makes a lot of their money from ad revenue. Google Lens is built into Google Chrome as well. You don't have to go to a separate app to use it. Google makes the Android operating system even if you have a Samsung device, Samsung and LG and others license the Android operating system for your smartphone or tablet, and they but they can add other capabilities to it. They can customize it. Pixel is made by Google, and so it only comes with Google apps, and no customizations are made to the Google apps other than what Google offers standard. I have the Google Chrome app. It'll open up the last thing I was looking at. I do have a couple of buttons here. I do have a home button that takes me to my home screen on Google. There is a search box. There's also a an address bar here. There's a hamburger menu icon right here. There's the app uh, selector icon here. There's a plus button, a square with the number 11 in it, and three dots for more, and my image, which tells me I'm logged into my Google account. So this is the standard default Google homepage uh, that comes with your browser. This field here is a search and address bar where you can type in and search Google or type in a specific URL if you choose to. And when you click on it, it'll go to that particular link. It'll show you something that you've used recently. The plus button lets you open up a new website. So if I want to open up, when I go to the search field here and I type in a site, let me type in something like Microsoft, okay. Uh, it'll bring up Google search results here. So I can see search results for Microsoft that are listed by Google. So when I'm typing in a name in the search and address field or without any .com or .edu, Google is gonna assume I wanted to do a search. Now, because I use the plus button here, the tab number went up to 12 from 11 and you can see see here's the search page that I opened up. When you open up tabs, they don't show up on a smartphone the same way they do on a desktop. If I open up Chrome on my desktop, let me get rid of my annotation here. If I open up Chrome on a desktop, and I'm going to enlarge this a little bit so you can see it side by side. If I open up a new tab, the tab has a plus button that opens up. So I can switch between tabs this way on the desktop application, whereas on the mobile app, it doesn't allow me to see that tab view, 
but on a tablet version of Google of Chrome, it probably would. So I'm going to hit the back button here. That's going to take me back to my last search page. A couple of other things that are integrated in the Google Chrome app for Android is a microphone and the Google Lens icon. So you can launch Lens and it will bring up a camera. Like you can search for things with your camera. So if I wanted to search for a mouse, for example, my Logitech mouse, I can tap on that and it will give me the, it'll search for uh, items based on taking a picture. So Lens is easier to get to on Chrome on Android than it is on Chrome on iPhone or iPad. So that's one of the tools that makes it really, really easy to get to and work and look at. Let's take a look at some of these buttons here. There's a three dots and that gives you access to all of the options and settings for Google Chrome. Very similar to the three dots you get on the desktop version. New tab, new window, new incognito window. You can't open up a new window on the smartphone version of the app because the screen is not big enough to hold a new window. But you can open up a new incognito tab that gives you the ability. Incognito is their private mode that uh, does not track your searching and activity when you're browsing the web. You'll see history, downloads, bookmarks. Google has password manager that shows up on the desktop. They have some other options, extensions that exist on the desktop. You have a, a zoom control. You've got share, print, cast, find, and more tools. So the tools are going to look a little bit different on the desktop than they are going to be on the mobile app. You can search in page, you can translate, you can add a website to your home screen. You can switch over to the desktop version of a website. When you access a website from a smartphone or mobile device, the website software says to itself, okay, you're coming to me from an Android or an iPhone or an iPad or an Android tablet. You're using a mobile app. I'm going to send you a version of my website that is designed to be navigated on a smartphone or on a tablet if it's slightly different. But you can always go to the full desktop site of a website. You'll see the desktop view. It's just that the desktop view is designed for much more horizontal space than a smartphone view is designed for. I brought up a Spanish website here. This site is in Spanish and Immediately, I have an option in Google to get this site translated from span see it in Spanish or see it in English. So Google will pop up a little message here at the bottom that'll give you the ability to translate a website immediately. So if I tap on English, it's going to translate the entire website from Spanish to English without anything I need to do to go to a special translate option. So that's one of the great tools in Android that it gives you that capability to do that immediate translation. So sometimes Android Chrome is going to be easier to use than other browsers because of that capability. So you don't have to tell it what language you want it translated to. It'll automatically translate it. Accessibility has an option called simplified view. So I'm in accessibility on my settings. I can scale the text obviously and make the text bigger on the website if I want to. But simplified view, turning it on allows me to get notified on the browser whenever a website that has the option for me to take a look at a simplified view. So let's take a look at share. Share gives you the ability to share this URL link. You can copy the link and paste it into something else. You copy it to the clipboard on your device. You can send it via 
Gmail, and it'll include a link to it. So if you want to send it to yourself, you could send it to yourself on Gmail. And it's integrated pretty tightly with, with Gmail by default. You can share it to other types of applications through messages and uh, text messages and copy the URL. One of the things you can do is you can share it to what's called devices or print. Now, I want to share it to a device. And this is a good situation where I have my desktop, Chrome open, as well as my Android. If I tap share to device, you'll see that I've got devices where I'm logged into Google nearby that pop up. So I'm going to send this to my MacBook Pro. And you can see in my MacBook Pro, Chrome has opened up a window that says page share from another device. I can just click open a new tab and it opens up that web page on my Chrome desktop view. So it's an easy way if you are looking at a web page on your Android or also iPhone works as well this way, but you are using Chrome and you want to get that web page open on your desktop because it's going to be easier to work with, or you just decided to sit down and work with uh, something. You can get a quick view of that uh, very, very quickly. Again, if I go to um, Bobology, for example, and I go to a web page, say this is the new article I have, Prompt Engineering, and I tap the three dots, and I tap Share, and I tap Send to Device. Um, on the, you know, uh, I select MacBook Pro, and I'll see a page shared from another device, and it'll pull up that web page for me automatically. So it's a great way to share back and forth between your smartphone or other devices that you're using with Google. We've looked at tab, lens, uh, home screen share. There are ways you can download web pages to your phone so that you can keep them for reading while you are offline so that you don't have to be online on the internet. If you go to uh, the settings here and you tap on the download button here, that will give you the ability to download this web page and, and you're able to open it locally when you download it that way. So it's, I'll, I'll do it again, it's pretty quick. A couple of other settings that are interesting, history obviously, recent tabs, uh, you can search in a page. So if you want to search on a specific web page for something like say chat GPT, bookmarks is where you can manage your bookmarks I mentioned. You have the ability to add an icon to a home screen. So if you visit a web page frequently and you want to add it to the home screen of your device, you can just click on add to home screen. Google does allow you to change your search to Yahoo, Bing, Yandex, or DuckDuckGo. So you're not obligated to use the Google search engine. You can use their password manager. They have Google Wallet. They have the ability for you to store addresses that pre-fill. Uh, you can choose the theme that you want for it. You can change your settings for specific sites and they will tell you what your Chrome version is just by clicking about Chrome. Chrome is also pretty well integrated with your Google Apps. Uh, the App Switcher icon, which appears on a home page on Google Desktop, brings up a list of apps that you have, you're using, but the App Switcher on your Chrome Android device will also bring up the list of apps, and they're organized the same way as you have them organized on your desktop. So they're, they're synchronized. So slides, docs, calendar, YouTube, Gmail, you can see are the same across both devices, um, Meet, Drive, Sheets, etc. So if I wanted to go to Google Docs, for example, I can open up the Google Docs, but it'll open up the Docs for mobile. Let's go to 
home here and type an app icon. I've got some. Let's type on Google Calendar. It will show you a view of Google Calendar that is being viewed in the browser. And one of the things that Google does is Google focuses on making their apps work in browsers uh, as effectively as they work in downloadable app itself. In fact, on desktops, so you see calendar here. If you want to add a calendar event, it's done through the web browser activity. And same thing with all of the other applications you might look at and utilize. So you can go directly to Google Maps um, and use it within the browser the same way it works uh, on the mobile app itself. There's a hamburger view. The hamburger will bring up a few other options for your search settings. Um, it's saving your history, uh, safe search, blurring on for different sites, um, language, dark theme, few more settings, but one of the things I want to point out to you is advanced search. Advanced search is really powerful on Google. AI for as an alternative to search. AI is good for giving you an answer. Uh, Google is good for letting you search the internet and find things. So if I wanted to go to advanced search, it opens up a whole new window here that shows me find pages with these words. When you type in a search on Google, it's going to use its own intelligence in the search engine to kind of deduce what it is you're looking for. So if I'm looking for, say, furniture that uh, take home today, I can type that in and Google will use spell check. Uh, it will search for websites that have all of these words. I can choose to an exact phrase or word. So the exact word or phrase, meaning this website has to have these words in this order. Normally, you would put them in in a different way. So if I change this to all of these words, which is generally how the standard Google search works, I could say colonial furniture. And it will search for websites that have that phrase listed exactly that way. And so the website has to have the phrase colonial furniture. Now, if you look at the search field here, what Google's done is they put quotations around the phrase colonial furniture. You can do that manually if you want to, but if you use the advanced search feature that is available with the hamburger icon, you can use it in a little bit easier fashion. 